Welcome to the HyperIP web configuration video. In this video, you will learn to define your HyperIP sites, define intercepts to control traffic optimized by HyperIP, and set bandwidth rates to manage WAN throughput. This video assumes you have completed the steps in the HyperIP installation video to create the HyperIP virtual appliance. You've completed the initial configuration, web browser access to the HyperIP is available, and you have requested, received, and installed your HyperIP keys. If you have not requested keys and need to know how, please view the HyperIP installation video or quick start guide. Connect to the HyperIP using a browser and navigate to the system config page. This video will show a basic HyperIP configuration. Refer to the browser help pages or the HyperIP user guide for more information regarding the user interface and available parameters. Some of the information on the system page was set during the initial CLI configuration. The systems page is broken into three sections. Enter the data you gathered from the Quick Start Configuration Worksheets in the appropriate area and click on the Apply button at the bottom of the section. I'll add my domain name in the Systems Configuration section and apply. Since I'm only using the data port, I will disable the management interface by checking Disable and applying the change. Define the types of user connectivity allowed to this Hyper IP by checking the boxes in the Firewall Commands section to allow or disallow access. Checked boxes are allowed. Apply any changes by clicking the Secure Ports button. The Firewall section has its own restart. If changes are made to this area, click the Restart Firewall button. Navigate to the HyperIP config page. The HyperIP config page is used to define HyperIP sites, determine what traffic to send to each remote site, and define the time of day bandwidth schedule. Select Configure N by N Sites in the drop down menu and click Topology Command. In this video, we are configuring HyperIP Arsenal. The required information from your configuration worksheet is the site name and data port IP address for this HyperIP, the site name and data port IP address of the remote HyperIP. Always enter the site information for the HyperIP being configured in the first line and each remote HyperIP site in the subsequent lines. Site number is a unique identifier for this HyperIP. The number can be anything between 1 and 99. All HyperIPs must use site number 6 when defining Arsenal in their configuration. Site name is used to identify each site and is shown in displays and configuration drop down menus. The primary IP address is the data port address of the Hyper IP being configured. For Arsenal, this is 10.1.6.235. The virtual IP address, ID, and secondary IP address are only required to run automatic hot standby. We will leave those blank. Site size and max rate only affect remote sites and we will leave those blank also. The IP address for a remote site is that Hyper IP's data port address. For Site Yankees, that is 10.1.5.232. All Hyper IPs will use Site Number 5 when defining Site Yankees. If the link is under 45 megabits per second or using a VPN, set SEG size to 1300. It is OK to leave it at default for now and change it later after running segment size test. Max rate limits the speed of traffic from this Hyper IP to the remote site Hyper IP. It is only required if there are multiple remote sites. We'll leave this blank and control the rate using bandwidth schedule. Note, the aggregate rate limit for all remote sites cannot exceed this Hyper IP's key limit. Enter the site number of this Hyper IP in the Configure This Unit as Site Number window. This Hyper IP is site number 6. Apply the configuration. This will take a couple of minutes to complete. Verify the sites are installed. You can see in Site Yankees that Arsenal is Site 6 and Yankees is Site 5. In the Start Halt Remote Sites area, select the Remote Site and Start Site in the drop down menus and click State Command. Select Proxies and Intercepts in the drop down menu and click Topology Command. Intercepts work as a filter to determine what traffic will be included in the Hyper IP tunnel. 
Intercept ID is a unique identifier to this hyper IP and can be 1 to 8 characters long. The drop down contains the destination site for traffic matching this intercept. The source and destination IPs define the traffic that will be intercepted. The source IP address is a host or network on the same side of the WAN as this hyper IP. The destination IP address is a host or network on the other side of the WAN. An IP address may be wildcarded on a byte boundary. A blank port entry includes all ports for the configured IP address. Apply the configuration. Verify the intercept is added. Repeat for additional intercepts. In Hyper IP Yankees, the source and destination IPs will be reversed. Configure the rate schedule to control the speed Hyper IP will send data to remote sites by selecting Bandwidth Schedule in the Topology drop down menu. In the right frame, select the day, month, date, start, and end times for this entry. Fill in the megabits per second, select the remote site, and add rule. Refer to the Hyper IP User Guide for more information on configuring time of day rate limiting. Navigate to the Advanced Config page. Traffic to the remote Hyper IP must go out the data port. If the default gateway is not on the data port, add a route to the remote Hyper IP. You may also need to add routes if you're using both the data and management interfaces. Specify the interface associated with this route in the dropdown, then enter the destination address, netmask, and gateway. To add the route now, check the immediate box. Add the route. Verify the route is installed in the right frame output, and repeat for additional IP routes. Show any restarts necessary to implement changes by selecting Show Pending Restarts in the drop-down menu and clicking Service Apply. You can see a reboot is required to implement the changes. Select Reboot in the drop-down menu and click Service Apply. Confirm the reboot. Follow the same process to configure the remainder of your Hyper IPs. The Hyper IPs should be able to communicate with each other after all configurations are implemented. Verify the sites are communicating by executing a display Hyper IP state and verifying the current state is active. Any state other than active means the Hyper IPs are not ready to move traffic. If you use segment size 1300 in your site configuration, this part of the configuration is complete. If you do not use seg size 1300, run segment size test to determine an appropriate setting for your network. Navigate to the Diagnostic Commands page. Select the remote Hyper IP in the Segment Size drop down menu. Set megabytes per pass as 10 times your bandwidth schedule setting. I set my bandwidth schedule to 20 megabits per second, so I will use 200 megabytes per pass. Each pass of this test should take about 90 seconds for a total test time of 15 minutes. You can view the results of each completed pass by clicking Retrieve SEG results. In a non-impeded network, the passes should all take approximately the same amount of time and show similar speed results. If this is the case, leave the site SEG size at the default setting. If the test looks like it is hung or speeds are dropping substantially, you can kill SEG test and use the byte size of the highest bandwidth pass so far as the site SEG size. To modify the segment size, Go to the N by N config page. Edit the site information in the blue box area, changing 32768 in the remote site definition to the new seg size. Click New Config and confirm the changes. You will need to start the sites and verify restarts to complete the implementation. Follow the same process to configure the remainder of your Hyper IPs. The Hyper IP should be able to communicate with each other after all configurations are implemented. You've just learned how to define your hyper IP sites, define intercepts for your network traffic, configure routes and bandwidth schedule, view the hyper IP verification video for the steps to direct traffic to your hyper IPs, and more information on viewing traffic using hyper IP. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us.